I'm just going to start again. So good morning. I'm Ashley McCarty, Executive Director of Missouri Farmers Care. I've passed out information in these packets in front of you. Echo, there is a packet there if that is helpful for okay. you as well. Thank you. That talks about Missouri Farmers Care, Agro Ready County designation, and why we're here. So I'm excited to be in Scotland County. I think Scotland County is a perfect fit to become an Agro Ready designated state. Agriculture is undoubtedly and undisputedly the economic driver here. Therefore, I think it makes sense to partner with the agriculture groups across Missouri to grow that. We have a big, big vision of growth for Missouri agriculture. So I lead as one of the hats that I have been given um, Mo5, which is a mouthful, but it's Missouri Food, Feed, Fuel, Fiber, and Forestry Consortium. It is the University of Missouri Agriculture and the State Department of Agriculture's goal to grow Missouri commodities. And so this, these opportunities that are presented under Missouri Agro Ready County designation fall in line with that vision to grow. We don't have a specific vision for any Agro Ready designated county that is as unique as the counties are, right? So Vernon County of our 65 Agro Ready, or 64 Agro Ready designated county, counties, Vernon County wanted local meat processing. They didn't have that. Holt County wants a port on the Missouri River. Um, Audrain County is looking to bring some family owned dairies from out of the state and have them locate in Audrain County. But that vision is not ours. It's to work with you guys to figure out what the best strengths and opportunities are for any given county that applies here. Um, as I was explaining, you can see just exactly who Missouri Farmers Care is through this power of partnership form. It is the dairymen, the dog breeders, uh, the cooperatives in the state, the corn growers, soybean producers, cattlemen, pork producers, um, FCS Financial and many, many more that make up the breadth and depth of Missouri agriculture. Those members are who the partnership with Agro Ready County designation is made up with. It is a voluntary, no cost partnership to counties that again is very driven. We, our goal is to be one tool in a toolbox of opportunities and resources to be able to promote growth and development, um, to be able to support agriculture. Some of those tools that we provide we are just launching a video series in which we're making specific videos for counties. So we've handed Audrain County, our first AgriReady designated county, a three minute video that talks about the, the message they developed was Audrain County is a great place to live, work and do business. We're in the middle of nowhere, but the center of everything. There's a lot going on here. Um, that's true. They've brought, since becoming AgriReady designated, they've brought a community college program focusing on ag tech to Audrain County. That's just one of many opportunities. And so, uh, that's one of them. Another one can be found over on the left-hand side of that folder. There's a flyer that says Ag Education on the Move. We offer this to our Ag Already designated counties. Again, agriculture underwrites the cost. This is a 10-week hands-on program where we train best and brightest FFA members to go into the elementary schools in the county and talk about agriculture. Uh, we They germinate soybeans. They see yeast in action and make bread. They talk about soil profiles and conservation. Um, they balance a feed ration to understand the care that farmers take of the land, of water, of wildlife, and of our livestock 365 days a year. And so uh, that program reached over 7,000 kids in the last uh, two semesters and is poised for a lot more growth. And we would love to see that brought into third grade classes, targets third graders, um, there's some preschool work as well. We would love to see that. We uh, have aligned this with state standards and curriculum. So we're not going in and asking for time away from state standards and curriculum. We're just asking to augment that by bringing a little bit of the farm into the classroom. Um, we also, while speaking on kids, um, part of what else our organization does outside of Agro Ready County designation in Ag Education on the Move is a big drive to feed kids. The stats on child food insecurity in Missouri are fairly, fairly sobering. Um, you don't have to see stats if you spend much time in a school or anywhere else, but uh, one in five to one in seven Missouri kids don't regularly know where their next meal will come from. And we think in the a land of abundance that we have, we do such a good job producing in this nation that that's unacceptable. So Ag has banded together over the last several years, since 2017, to stand in the gap in a fairly substantial way. This looked like two million meals we raised last year. Uh, we do that by planting seeds with youth across the state. So 900 FFA students came to the state fair last year. They packed 200,000 meals in a day. And those go out to food banks across Missouri, including Scotland County, which is served by Central and Northeast Missouri Food Bank. And so 
that's part of what else this organization, Missouri Farmers Care, does. You'll also see um, in reference to conservation, we have a conservation stewardship award on private working lands. So we highlight those that do a fantastic job with um, uh, far left side. Sure it's down there. No, I'm going to go down. Yeah, you did. So uh, we highlight a producer family a year that does a great job protecting clean air, clean water, abundant wildlife while sustaining a farm business. And uh, the, you can see the recipients last year were the Eddings from Lafayette County, but we've had winners from um, Lynn County, Shelby County, Callaway County, and more. So we're on our sixth year this year. And so they become leaders and spokespeople for the practices that they use that are pushing the envelope for conservation. There's a lot of um, nutrient management work. There's a lot of cover crops and other things that they're doing um, on their farm on a daily basis with that long-term vision in mind that we all share across agriculture. I think I've hit the highlights. So now I'm here to take your questions and visit any further anything you guys want to talk about. Do you have anybody that helps write grants if we come up with a program? That's a great question. So yes, that was the same question Holt County asked. Yes, we can certainly help in that regard. So the, we don't often, um, we would, we have access to grant writers. The partnerships on the economic development front that we have is um, Missouri Ag and Small Business Development Authority has it, part of their questionnaire and part of their application is, do you come from an ag already designated county? And so that counts in the way of those local entrepreneurs that are looking to build value-added businesses. We also work with the Department of Economic Development and Missouri Partnership. So Economic Development is working to grow businesses that already have a footprint in Missouri. Missouri Partnership is the marketing arm. They are trying to bring new businesses into the state of Missouri. And so uh, we work very closely with them. One example of that would be uh, the beef processing facility that was located, is going to be located in Warren County that will be taking uh, fat cattle as well as coal cows from across the state. And we worked very closely to help recruit that business after they had picked Warren County as a, as a finalist in their nationwide search. Uh, we took a group of local producers up to Green Bay to one of their facilities to see that uh, that was a neighbor that they wanted to have and to kind of ground truth what that operation was and what they were saying and that we were part of that recruitment process. So we're often part of that. But absolutely, if there's a grant writing opportunity, we're happy to engage and can can retain some grant writers. So, good question. Any other questions or comments, Chris? I am gonna let you speak. I think it's coming your way. I think it's a you guys are doing a great job. I mean, we need to promote Missouri agriculture and stay ahead of the curve because it's not future's not looking good sometimes right. there's a lot of challenges yes certainly. yeah how many counties do you have a list of counties that are already at i ready? do commissioners have a map there are 63 counties that are already designated as agro ready we launched this program at the end of 2015 and have seen steady growth since that time and continue to see so I would think I was saying right before you stepped in, Echo, that um, Camden County will be voting tomorrow to become Act Ready Designated. There are several other counties on the horizon that are also looking to grow right now. So this is, uh, Scotland County is leading the way, but there's a real growth surge going on, joining those six, so we have 63 of 114 counties. So are, is, are we the first up here in the Northeast? No, there's the map. Yeah. Macon and Marion. Okay. Yes, Macon and Marion would be uh, Sullivan would be the next closest in what I would consider Northeast Missouri. And then, um, do you have other counties that have health ordinances? Yes, so I have counties that have repealed their health ordinances to become agro-ready designated. So Caldwell did that two years ago. Henry County probably repealed theirs two years before that to become agro-ready designated. Uh, we have counties that are also looking to repeal, so Camden County just repealed their health ordinance last Tuesday in order, in part, to become agro-ready designated. They felt like they were leaving too much on the table. They had a health ordinance which was now null, void, and unenforceable, yet they couldn't become agro-ready because that unenforceable ordinance was still on the books. So four. Four that have, and several that are looking that have township ordinances 
um, or planning and zoning regulations that they're looking to work through to remove the barriers to become agro ready. And what's the immediate impact? Yes. So the immediate impact is that you, one, step into partnership with the 45 organizations of Missouri Farmers Care so that they are, they're all fielding calls. So Kevin Buckaloo from Missouri Corps, that we're fielding calls regularly. I used to sit in that office on, I want to put a, I've had this, this exact call. I want to put a feed mill in Northeast Missouri, but I want to do it in a county that doesn't have a health ordinance because why would I put a feed mill in a place that doesn't support animal agricultural opportunities? And so where would I do that? We're not going to recommend a place that has restrictions on agriculture. And so that's one. Uh, the second is we come in with the Ag Education on the Move and offer that to every county, every, every student, every school in the county. And so that would be the second deliverable. The third is then the, I don't know if you were in here when I mentioned, um, you know, the videos that we're making for yeah. counties and hand those over to them. You know, they, they direct the commentary, they direct the message that's delivered there. We hand those over as a tool that a county may not have the resources to be able to uh, deliver to go promote themselves as a great place, again, to be, to live, to work, to build a business. So those are some immediates. Do you guys have like a landing spot to find all the, those videos to just like check them look, out? Look on our website, mofarmerscare.com, backslash agro ready. Okay. Agro dash ready. Yes. And a lot of that is out there. Or social media as well. And Doc, what's your... What's your position here? Well, I'm just here to learn something, and I'm a visitor, and, and I think this is a good program here. Yeah. So do they need to vote to make this? That would be, it, it requires uh, consent of all three commissioners to apply. It's very simple. Again, it's voluntary. So we want this to be a win-win for the county. It's, it's incumbent upon us to make this a positive win-win because it's a voluntary program. So. Their governance is up to them, whether they vote or they just apply. That's that's in their hands, not mine. Um, but they do all need to consent and agree, and they will apply. Uh, we then have a committee that's made up of um, ag leaders from across the state and staff of our ag leading organizations that review the application, that make sure they meet the specifications, which are also contained here, which they do now that the county health ordinance has been repealed, and then we'll vote to accept the county into our partnership then we'll update our maps and we'll send out news releases so that all of our partners know this is a great place to house a business or support local. This isn't just about bringing business in. This is also about supporting growth from within. And ultimately, the big picture is um, we created, you know, our, our goal, all of our goal, I live on a century family farm um, that I had to come back from school to, all of our goal is to plant really deep roots in our kids here so they want to be back right and so when you start at the third grade level or the preschool level opening kids eyes to the ag around them hopefully then that ties into we're also supporting job business or job growth and business development so that it feeds back into itself that they see the potential in agriculture all around them that then they're the creators of opportunities or opportunities have been created in places so that there's um, just a a stronger fabric of an ag economy to come to stay home with at or to come back home to. So how do our readers like private citizens participate? Mm -hmm. So that's a great question. I mean we all we all participate in community betterment, right? We make the place we call home. I would say the first thing that comes into my mind is this ag education on the move program is delivered in two ways. One is through FFA students, 4-H students as well. Um, FFA deliver the majority of the curriculum because they already have an advisor in school, it's already a structure in schools. And so we have something like 80 FFA students that are participating as peer mentor educators this semester. So the first opportunity is for FFA students to volunteer, to, to connect with us. We'll train them to go be the, that mentor and open kids' eyes to ag. And so that's one way that uh, families can, your kids can get involved. Um, the other way is just to look at the opportunities around us, you know, to assess the opportunities for growth and development and be a part of that. There's a, there's a lot of opportunities in this state for value-added business development. And I'm really not the expert in this room. Brent Rockhold is because he's been in these value-added ventures. But I've seen a lot of farmers come together, pool re not just farmers, 
individuals and communities. Our ethanol industry in the state of Missouri is a perfect example of that. And have you seen what they're doing harvesting pig farts? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to talk about this later yes, because yes. I'm right. I've but been covering that be, for a couple of years. Nothing can be captured to create really green, clean, renewable uh, natural gas. So. so, and then also like here in Scotland County specifically. We have, a t we have a huge Mennonite population yes. who don't go to public schools, who don't participate yes. in FFA. How do we include them in this program? Mm, good question. Um, I don't know. They get a pretty good hands-on work experience in life. I don't know if they would want ask to be included, right? I mean, if they were seeking inclusion, I we homeschool our kids, so I understand um, you know, not everybody who doesn't have their kids in public school is looking for the things that are offered by public schools. So that's a great question. I may defer to the... You can get back to me on it. Yeah, I'll you, think about that. Do you guys have an answer for that? Okay, well, if anyone... if Reach back out. Yes, okay. and, uh, Sounds good. The, and what I would say about the huge Mennonite community here is they are certainly entrepreneurs. And um, that is undeniable that there's a lot of entrepreneurship that naturally goes, builds in that community. And so I think this benefits uh, their community as well as everybody else. In the yeah, community. and they have a huge share of the business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. spectrum business. of businesses here, mm -hmm. definitely involved in ag, yes. um, don't participate in kind of yes. um, some of the kind of standard cultural things right. that we all do so the last time you know one of the benefits is the last time I looked and it's been probably eight or ten years since I looked at Scotland County demographics was that 60 percent of the county population was leaving the county to work and so that is a that's a lot <laughs> you know that uh, I think of, when I think of a bedroom community I think of Ashland or something like that down by Columbia and Jeff City mm -hmm. but you have to start thinking about that here and what business growth can do. What does Scotland County have? Land, natural resources, um, hard workers. You know, there's a lot of benefits that coming together to whatever the business is, process meat locally or whatever it is, there's a lot of opportunity. Beauty, hunting, that. low cost of living, yes. tight knit community, mm -hmm. um, a, a value system that is very yeah. unique. It is. Are you uh, dealing a lot with the windmills and the solar panels right now? That is a great question. So, no. And Missouri Farmers Care, um, ha it, it doesn't, we don't lobby per se. And so there's a lot going on in Jefferson City right now with eminent domain and with private property rights. That is not something that we're engaged with, but it is certainly, um, you know, there's some there's private property rights that revolve around that whole conversation, but it's not something that our organization is involved with. A lot of our members are are fighting very hard for private property rights in the capital, but it's not something that we're dealing with. It's something a lot of our counties are dealing with, and a lot of our commissions are dealing with. And you know, I've had commissions say, "Wow, um, animal feeding operations don't don't light a candle to the controversy that we have, the strong feelings that people have with." solar farms or windmills or whatever it may be in our county, but it's not something we've engaged in. So. How close is the new solar farm going into your place? Pretty close. I would <laughs> say six miles. I haven't quite seen the closest part of the footprint, but it's not very far away on some prime farmland. I can think of a lot of buildings I would rather stick solar panels on than farmland, but they didn't ask me. It's above my pay grade. Yeah, it'll it will it will be a boon a short term boon to the economy certainly as those construction workers come in no different than the wind farms were, um, but yeah it'll be it's, I think it's a seven hundred acre development or something like that. It's big. You know, talking about the Mennonite population, it's been about ten years ago. Mm -hmm. I. Uh, turned out on the FSA County Committee. Mm -hmm. So I was on there nine years. And the Mennonites, when I got on there, they didn't do much coming into the FSA office for any farm program or anything, but mm -hmm. kept getting more of them all the time when I was on there, of course. Mm -hmm. That's been 10 years ago, but I was on there for nine years. And they're 
a lot more of them coming into the FSA office and participating in the, what used to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Participating in government programs. Pardon? Participating in government programs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kevin, we haven't given you an opportunity to speak from Corn's perspective. <laughs> I'm just here to support support you. <clears throat> I'm excited for for this opportunity for this county. I mean, this is home for me. I mean, I, I'm I live in Schuyler County, and that's really home. That's where I'm from, is Lancaster. But I grew up here. I've worked here. I've worked all over. I know I know all you guys. So. I'm excited for the opportunities that um, this can bring for Northeast Missouri, and I think this is a, a great step uh, in the right direction for for this county and for the people of this community. And I would just add that if you guys, you know, you talked earlier about <clears throat> speaking at a meeting or anything, mm -hmm. if you ever want information from Missouri Corn, I give you my card. Please let me know. I'll be glad to come and speak at any uh, meetings that you have or gatherings that you have, and can update you on what Missouri Corn's doing and what we what we're working on and what we've been working on. But as far as this issue goes, um, guys, I can't think of a better thing to do for the community. So thank you for um, taking the time to consider this and mm -hmm. and move in this direction. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what we should do is uh, take a vote on whether we want to. I moved uh, for Scott McCann to become an aggravated county. David made the motion to join up. So now we do it. Because uh, it sounds like your group is the one to officially make this. Yes. We're just applying, right? We're yes, applying. you're applying. To yeah, officially apply to become aggravated. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I moved to reapply for it. I'll second that. Okay, is there any more discussion or you want to talk about or questions or before we vote? If not, then let's uh, let's we'll take a roll call vote. Commissioner Rockhold, vote aye. Commissioner Wiggins, aye. And myself, presiding Commissioner Epley, and I'll vote aye. That's 3 0. Awesome. Thank you for the presentation. Yes, thank you. We appreciate it. We look forward to working with you. Mm -hmm. We're really excited about it. Turning us off. <laughs>